So HX5, like I said, we continue to use that for auditoriums, houses of worship, gymnasiums, et cetera. Uh, that unit comes out with a 60, 45, 30, or 15 degree modular arrangement. Uh, it's high power, 600 watts, 990 dB a one watt or meter. And these come in indoor, outdoor, as well as in black or white versions. Need to click on this. There we go. Uh, so the module arrangement of these particular units is when you take out the front cover, you have uh, your 12 high frequency dome tweeters, your four five inch low frequency drivers, and your base reflex ports. Now for the outdoor version, those base report, uh, ports are covered up with like a foam membrane to reduce water kind of going in there. So they are covered up a little bit on the weatherproof versions. And when you get the mounting angles, you can see the angle adjustments that we have available to us. So essentially, you can start off your array from top to bottom and almost make a full circle or half circle if you wanted to, depending on how many units you put together. So these are good for arrangements for uh, arenas, uh, any tiered seating like cinemas, et cetera, where you want to hit the back of the room, but you also want to hit either directly below or just below the front stage part. So we can accomplish that now with these HX5 and HX7 speakers. That's what's unique about these units. They're basically fully adjustable out of the box. So to give you an idea of the angle adjustment, you'll see here on the HX5, uh, when you buy the unit, it comes the 60 degree mode as a factory preset. And this can be opened up to the 15 degree mode or uh, 45 or 30 degree mode. So when they release these units, they try to make it as simple as possible with the angle adjustments. So you'll see the little bracket adjustments on the bottom left there showing you the configurations. Uh, this has to be done per uh, cell arrangement there. You'll see there's about uh, four of these brackets there that can be adjusted. So depending on what configuration you go, you do need to adjust those individually in order to get to and uh, achieve your angle adjustment. To move on to accessories, here's the HX5 accessories. We have a rigging frame which supports not only the HX5, but also the subwoofer that goes on top of it. Uh, you don't need the rigging frame if you're just flying the HX5 by itself. They do come with the uh, rigging ears in the box. Uh, do keep in mind that those are at the bottom of the box and always taped to the bottom box on the inside. Uh, we have had numerous situations where insulations go in, those boxes are thrown away, and those, <laughs> those ears are now no longer available. So, uh, we do stock a few extra ones here, but just keep that in mind when you open the box up, make sure you dig out those mounting ears because you will not be able to mount the HX5 uh, flying wise without them. Now, uh, you have a ceiling bracket, you want to mount it directly to the ceiling. We have a fixed wall bracket uh, with no uh, uh, tilting availability, availability, which is the WM1, or if you want to be able to adjust the bracket a little bit and angle down off the wall, you go with the WM2. Uh, the subwoofer that's matched for that unit is the FB120. Uh, the handling for that is a 12 inch woofer at 600 watts. That has both a screw terminal and a speak on terminal uh, connections on the back of the unit. That does come in black and white, but however, this is only an indoor subwoofer. Uh, essentially, these units, both this one and the HX71, are more of like a plywood MDF type material that's just painted, so they will not last outside. Uh, so don't. Uh, definitely don't put these outside because they will get damaged. So now if we move on to Bigger Brother, the HX7, and the reason they released this unit was the HX5 was being so popular that in the systems that people wanted a little more impact, we had to go up to our SRA or SRC series. Uh, the SRA, SRC series are a module, essentially a module based system. You have to build it up per cell. So again, if you look at the right picture there, you have the four kind of cells, as I call them. That's a complete speaker. But if we went up from the HX5 to the SRA or SRC, you have to buy essentially one of those larger cells and then build up from there. So you'd be buying four just to make one arrangement like this. So we kind of had that little hole there, a gray area, where we didn't have something that was in between HX5 and the SRA and C series. So now we have the HX7. Uh, the nice thing about this is uh, again, same setup, ideal for auditoriums, houses of worship, et cetera. Uh, we also have uh, angles down to zero degrees. So this one does do a flat zero degrees, opposed to the HX5, which uh, was capped at 15. 
Uh, it's a larger design format, it's a little larger than the HX5. Uh, this one contains eight low frequency speakers and four wave, uh, guy, or wave front high frequency compression drivers. Uh, again, the horizontal coverage is remaining the same, 100 degrees, uh, but the power, power handling on this one is bumped up to 750 watts. Sensitivity is at 100 dB at one watt, one meter. And again, these come black or white, they are weatherproof versions, and you can do them in vertical or horizontal mounting. So taking a look at the front of the unit, you'll see the difference here. We have, now we have uh, basically eight of the 5.5 inch low frequency speakers compared to the four of the five inch versions of the HX5. Your base reflex ports are on the side there, as well as your high frequency compression drivers right down the middle. So now you'll see we have a more of a uniform coverage coming out of the speaker opposed to the HX5. What you'll notice about the HX5 with the tweeter ray right down the right hand side, does get a little more brighter on the right hand side of that speaker. Uh, the great thing about the HX5 as well is you can flip them upside down to compensate that for that on the left hand side. So if you're doing say a left and right speaker arrangement, you can have the right hand side of the speakers mounted normally and then to keep the your high frequency range all, all uniform, you would flip that other side upside down essentially and, and, and do it that way. Here's your mounting angles again. Here's your zero degree mode, 15, 30, and 45. If you want to do 60 degree mode in these speakers, you do need a separate bracket for this. I'll show that shortly. Uh, again, out of the box, that's the one thing that doesn't come as, as a 60 degree option. You do need to add a separate bracket if you want to do a 60 degree mode, which essentially joins the uh, clusters a little bit more tighter. Uh, that does not come in the box. So here's your angle adjustment. Now this, I have to say, is far more easier to do opposed to the HX5 series. Uh, the HX5 series is a little tricky because you actually had to remove the, those front grills, uh, which were each one came containing like a four uh, like Allen screw set up just to pull the grill off, and then you had to adjust the angle adjustments separately per cell. Now with the HX7, everything is right on the back of the speaker. It's simply unlatch the security screw there, uh, choose your angle adjustment, and latch it back in. It's a lot quicker, it's cleaner. Uh, it takes minutes to do compared to the HX5, so that's another bonus feature. And it looks a lot uh, nicer and easier to do, obviously, when you're putting it up, if you're you know, flying these up on a, uh, a lift, and you know, you know the time to do all this preparation work with the HX5, the HX7 is a lot easier to uh, put together. Now, HX7 accessories, there's quite a few. I recommend, highly recommend, if you are looking at the HX7 series, to download the installation manual. And in the installation manual, uh, in, the, uh, in the very end of it, essentially, you have about two or three pages worth of mounting configuration options. Essentially, it's going to show you what you see here, but it's going to go into more detail of if you want a wall mount, you're going to have to add this bracket plus this bracket plus this adapter. So keep that in mind, if you want to do certain arrangements, there may be one or two brackets that work together to essentially achieve what you're trying to do. So the CN7s, for example, that's for linking your HX7s together. The next thing you'll see is your angle adjustment bar. Again, this is only for 60 degree mode. You need one per 60 degree adjustment. That's a set, essentially. So the HY60 dBs are your set. You get your rigging frame, again, similar to the HX5. That's the mount of subwoofer above it. Again, you don't need that out of the box if you're just flying these units, but if you are adding a sub, I highly recommend that you basically have to go with this unit uh, to mount the subwoofer to it. Uh, the rigging bracket, uh, depending on how many units you link together, uh, you might need the HYVM7. This will uh, make your uh, connection point at the front as well as the rear of the HX7 to handle the weight distribution better. So you'd add this bracket for that uh, functionality. Here's the wall mount bracket. Which you'll see there, you kind of see the picture on the right there, it sort of attaches to that previous one here, HYVM7. So there's a scenario where you're now you're going to start to add two brackets in order to either wall mount it or fly it. HYTM7 for rigging by itself. You have the wall brace brackets, which allows a little bit of panning capability. And uh, that's the HYMS7. You also have your matching transformer adapter if you're adding a 20 volt line transformer to the back of it. And then finally, you have your HYST7 
uh, speaker stand adapter if you want to put it on a speaker stand. The subwoofer for this unit is similar to the, the FD120. However, this is a 15-inch uh, woofer. Again, same uh, type of material. Comes in black or white. Again, it's indoor only, but this is a larger woofer size. So it's a little bit more uh, bottom end for you on this uh, type of speaker for you. So if we look at the difference at a glance, the sensor has highlighted a few areas here. You all see the power handling. Your sensitivity is a little, a little bit more better on the HX7. Your frequency spot response is a bit lower range there. You have more components there for more uniform coverage, which I'll show you shortly here. Now another key thing would be the weight. So keep that in mind, the HX7s are quite a bit heavier. They're uh, 30 kilograms compared to 16 kilograms. Uh, however, they both use the same matching transformer if you want to use them in 70 volt mode. Uh, so performance. So here's uh, East Focus kind of showing a quick rendering of the HX5. Essentially, you're looking at uh, uh, 15 foot to the top of the speaker. This is now basically flowing right in the middle of the room here with a 100 by 80 room. So you see your, your range is there. Essentially, your coverage, your, your dB level there on the right with the, the graph is showing you what kind of impact you, you get by using a single HX5. Uh, now, the East Focus program is a free rendering program, which you can get off the website from AFMG, which supports our files. So once you go ahead and get this program, you can start doing your own renderings and get an idea of what kind of coverage you can get depending on what speaker option you go with. Now, here's the HX7. So obviously, it's a lot hotter coming off that unit compared to the HX5. You'll see the difference there. Same room, same uh, dimensions, same height, kind of give you an idea of the impact difference for these units. Now here's your same situation in your DB con configuration compare. If you look along the right-hand side there, you'll see the HX5 at the top and the HX7 at the bottom. So now that you'll know what the difference is in kind of what percentage you get and what kind of dB level you get out of each box. So looking at the two units, you're almost looking at a 6 dB difference overall at uh, the higher percentage area, which is right down the middle there, and about 87 dB compared to 81 dB on the HX5. So now you start to see the impact you actually get when using this uh, HX7 speaker compared to the HX5. So again, if people want more impact, they want a little more, you know, power, they want something, you know, they're playing maybe like a live band or they're doing like a, a say an OHL type of a hockey arena opposed to a entry level rec center, you probably want to go with the HX7. That would be your next step up. And if they want something beyond that, then that's when you go up again to, like I discussed earlier, was your SRA and SRC series. So here's a full array, give you an idea of the HX5. Again, this is 25 foot to the top of the speaker, kind of showing the coverage, how big it is, what kind of coverage you get, and what kind of impact you get with the HX5. If you move along the HX7, again, same height, same room size, again, you see the, di the difference in the impact you get. A lot hotter, obviously, right down the middle there on the HX7, a lot more impact down there as well. Coverage is pretty similar for your uh, horizontal there. And that's essentially the HX7, HX5 comparison there. So what does it look like when you do a venue? So if we do an arena, which we typically do, here's like a side shot example. Side shot would mean we run a row of speakers down uh, one side only. In this situation, we have them back to back. There's a row covering the seating surface, which is at the bottom there, and then a row covering the ice surface. So here's your coverage there, a little blue, uh, 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 a blue kind of a little bit yellow in the middle there of the arena. It's pretty decent coverage. It's, it's uniform. It's, it's, there's not many uh, dB variances there. And plus your seating coverage, I'll see you see a little bit of hot spots right there because that's going to be able to see a lot closer. And there will be tiered seating as well. So now we do the same thing with HX7, you now see the difference. HX5, HX7. You get a lot more impact right down the center of that ice. Obviously, seating areas got a lot more impact. 
just overall a lot more power going to that area. So again, here's the same setup here as well. So if you look at the HX7 at the bottom there, you're peaking about 25% overall at 90 dB, uh, whereas the uh, HX5, that's hitting about 32 dB, or sorry, 32% at 84 dB there. So again, almost a, basically a 6 dB difference overall with roughly the same percentage of coverage. So again, gives you an idea of the impact of these speakers and how they perform. And that's it for me today. Uh, and then sorry for the tech difficulties there. My apologies. Um, we can open the phones now. If you guys have any questions regarding the webinar, just let me know. If you want to contact me directly uh, afterwards, it's fine. You can contact me here at the office, extension 323, or just shoot me an email at, at the tech support email there, and we can get back to you. If you have uh, maybe a job-specific question regarding these units, we can definitely agree with that. So I'll open up the phones now. If anyone has questions, either chat them in the box there or just let me know. Uh, just a quick question. Yes. So uh, I noticed the sensitive, uh, the sensitive of the uh, X5 and X7 is just one dB different. But Correct. All your cartridge is about six dB different. Correct. So what's the, the specification you set up different between this uh, in the fo East Focus? The HX7 maintains a better DB coverage at their different mode selections, whereas the HX5 does drop off their DB coverage or DB rating at different degree modes. For example, you drop down to 96 DB at 60 degree mode on the HX5, whereas the HX7 basically maintains its 100 DB across the line there. You mean the coverage is different? Correct. Yeah, the coverage is different. So if we, in some of the examples, you had a bunch of those speaker cells set at 60 degree mode. And so when using 60 degree mode on the HX5, your DB drops to 96 dB. So does that mean in your East Focus, your angle is different between the X, uh, HX5 and HX7? No, uh, angle is the same. Angle is angle's all the same. It's just that the HX5, when using the HX5, when you start changing your angle mode, say from 15, 30, 45, and 60 degree mode, you lose your dB sensitivity. Okay, got it. You mean the, okay. okay. Yep. It goes down. I always showed the 15 degree mode uh, in the back here. Yeah. At the beginning. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. So it's a 90, 90 B at one watt meter. That, that's at a 15 degree mode only on the HX5. But once we start changing them, you'll see here. Uh, like this. Some of those units are, you know, 60 degree, 45 degree. You start losing EV on the HX5 when you change the angle coverage, whereas the HX7 maintains that. Got it. So I just read your specification. So the mentions the 99 dB. Uh, of the sensitive, so I just surprised how you so different based on the coverage. Yeah, okay. Because if you if you look look at the specs for the uh, sensitivity on the HX5, you'll see that your your dB goes down every time you change the angle. Mm -hmm. 